Hey everyone. So today we are here with one of my favorite people, Martha Keys, Thank and you. we are going to be talking about travel today because Martha did something I think probably most everybody in their life has dreamed about at one point in time. <laughs> However, few are able to actually do it. And that is that you like just left and went traveling for nine months. Yeah, almost just shy of 10. Just yeah. shy of 10 months, which yeah. is like, I, I would find myself sometimes being like, oh my heck, I'm so jealous. And then my kids would be screaming or whining about some something that they didn't have. And I'd be like, oh my heck, I am so glad I'm not yeah. doing that. Yeah. It turns out children screaming is not less annoying in Europe. It <laughs> and actually might be more annoying more because annoying. it's keeping you from <laughs> things you could otherwise be doing. Yeah. <laughs> so. so anyway, so I... I will say I had moments of envy and moments of panic for you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate those panic moments. <laughs> when you told me what you were taking with them for their toys, I was like, oh my heck, how is she going to do this? I don't even know. Yeah. So Yeah, it was, it was a struggle. They are happy to be home. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Do they play much Switch now that they're home or were they, are they just totally sick of it? They do because they now have like an actual switch instead of their switch lights because they uh -huh. have like the handheld ones and now they have they can play together and so they 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 are still playing the switch. Don't worry, they would not get that up. <laughs> it wasn't like if you work at a chocolate factory and you get some no. chocolate kind of no. scenario there. Nope, still going strong. <laughs> oh, rats. Okay, well that's off the list then on a reason uh, to do it, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, so I, I've had questions, though, for the last 10 months that <laughs> I wanted to ask you um, that I think are kind of pertaining to the whole writing thing. So one thing I wanted to know is, like, how did the traveling, because you really weren't in a set location. It's not like you lived in one place for nine months and then just mm -hmm. kind of took side trips. Like, you, yeah. you picked up and left and yeah. moved to basically a new home mm -hmm. every uh most of the time it was two to two and a half weeks and then at the end we did a month in a spot and then a month in another spot um but the rest two of the time it was every weeks. every wow. two two and a half weeks. yeah so that's even less than i thought so how did that like affect your writing time and how um, you your and how you wrote because i know writers a lot of the time kind of have a a set this is where I write. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. I mean, I've heard people even are like, I light a candle. Mm -hmm. they <laughs> like the ritualistic. It tells my brain it's time <laughs> to write, which I'm not that way, but you know. So yeah. how did that affect your actual writing? Um, I was surprised to find that uh, writing, uh, at the end it got really hard. I don't know. I think I was chunky and I was writing a difficult book and um yeah, I don't know. I think I was just kind of done. So it got really hard at the end. Like that last month was just, I had so much anxiety about writing this book that like, I couldn't even open my laptop. I was just like, nope, I nope, it's not doing it today. But the rest of the time I was surprisingly, uh, it didn't, it didn't seem to affect me that much. Like I, I just knew I had to, I had to write. And so I tried to do like we kind of, I kind of scheduled my writing around our plans for the day. So if we wanted to be out in the afternoon, I'd do my writing in the morning and sometimes use that as kind of an incentive. Like sooner I get this done, the sooner we can get out the door and go do something. Um, but yeah, I actually maintained my schedule pretty well. Like I wrote five to six days a week. Um, I try to get in like about 2000 words a day. Um, and I don't know, like, I'm honestly surprised looking back <laughs> that I was able to do that. I must have had some special help from somewhere because I, uh, yeah, it was kind of, kind of wild. But we, we had planned it so that, you know, we were only planning on getting out like once, not even once a day, like once every two days sometimes um, to see one thing because that's about all the kids can manage. Mm. And sometimes all my husband could manage. <laughs> so I just knew that you know I had my writing time I, I should be able to get my writing done in in my writing in every day so I don't know <laughs> so I was gonna say it, it must have been it can't be handled like a vacation no to uh, but yet it kind of was still because you were only in places for two and a half weeks yeah so when we set out we were kind of like 
we're going to do a month in, you know, each, each yeah. Airbnb. That was kind of the plan. Cause once you get to 28 days, you get a heavy discount on a lot of Airbnbs. Yeah. That's but, what but when push came to shove, it was like, we knew our first few locations, at least the countries we wanted to go to like Spain, um, where my husband served a mission in France, where I was an exchange student and did an internship and stuff. And so when it came down to it and we had to choose a location, like we have so many places we want to see yeah. in these countries. And it was just too, it was too hard. We had to like, kind of try to find the balance between, you know, using our time well and not right. being like, go, 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 go all the time. So yeah. Yeah, I had we had to make that mental shift and and like cooking at home, which we only ate out like once every two weeks. Cooking at home made a big difference in wow. kind of feeling yeah. like we were living there rather than just kind of visiting. So yeah. I hadn't um, thought about that, but yeah, I can yeah. see that. Yeah. So um oh I just had something and now I just lost it. I should have written it down. No. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I, I'm fairly impressed, though, because I think you actually wrote better than I did last year. And I was like, <laughs> in my normal habitat. So, normal you know. habitat. <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I'm not efficient with my time here at home. Like, I might have a spot that I sit in to write every day, which I'm trying to do it in this office, because normally it's like on the couch on or your on bed. my bed. Yeah, I and that's really bad for my posture and everything yeah. so I've been trying not to do that but I'll sit there and I just like you know you just procrastinate by any means necessary and mm -hmm. so I'm not efficient with my time at home and I think I was a little bit better about that on the trip um because first of all I was like I I'm it like my husband's not working right now and yeah. surprisingly that pressure didn't didn't like squash my my creativity which I think it can for a lot of people yeah but um I just knew that like this was, this was the plan. We came here and we planned for me to work and to travel. So I had to. So maybe that leads me into my next question, because how did it affect the writing itself? As in like, do you find that you were more descriptive or it was easier to write in because you were living in the area? Do you know what um, I mean? Yeah. So like, as far as, cause I know that like I had a book that was set in Scotland on one of the isle, on um, one of the islands in Scotland, and mm -hmm. I, a friend read it, <laughs> was so glad, and <laughs> she's from Scotland, and she uh -huh. was like, oh, "It, you just didn't have enough." I mean, I knew you'd never been there because you didn't say what it tasted like and what it smelled like, and I was like, oh. "Even when yeah. I've been there, I don't do that." Because, yeah, and I don't well, know if maybe I would now as a writer. But so, have you noticed? Has it changed? any of the way you've written? Um, I think, I think so. Um, I mean, we spent the summer essentially in the UK and Ireland and um, it does kind of like, I went to a ton of, of, you know, estates and when we were in England and in Scotland, I went to, I don't know, just, I went to like a lot of some black houses and kind of historical stuff like that. And I feel like it does when I'm in writing mode, it does. I look at things differently. You know, mm -hmm. I, I ask the most like obscure questions to the um, docents at those estates. Like I can't tell you how many of them I asked about specifically about door fixtures, like doorknobs and locks, because that was something I was very curious about and fixated on. And um, I really probably asked it at like 10 different <laughs> estates because it's and something it, that's almost always written wrong <laughs> yeah it's like it, well and there's like such conflicting information about it it's yeah. like when did doorknob mechanisms really come and right. you know how how did things latch and lock and I just really wanted to be like feel like I understood and so I asked that at, and other random questions at a lot of estates and that and it just kind of it just makes everything feel a little bit more real and like as far as smells I think that's a little bit tricky because we're so far distant from a lot of the stuff that we're, we'd be describing, but like right. in, in Scotland, you know, a black house that I visited, they had like the peat fire going, or we actually stayed in an Airbnb in Ireland where we had a peat stove, like peat burning stove. And so those things, it was nice. Cause I was like, okay, yeah. this, now I know what this smell would have been so prevalent, you know, right. this would have been like, everything would have smelled like peat. And so that was really nice. Um, but so, yeah, I feel like it has, um, given me a much better handle on kind of certain things, but other things like are, are so hard because they're just, you know, it's 200 plus years ago. And so, yeah. you know, well, and I also think sometimes smell is subjective also. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, totally. I mean, what, how are olfactories? Mm-hmm. That's what they are, right? Olfactories. Yeah, olfactories. <laughs> will process what a smell is, you know? Because, uh-huh. I mean, I guess it also boils down to background information, you know, what other smells you have to compare it to, right? Right. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I think at the, when I visited Chatsworth House, they had like a, a little set in the gift shop of like different smells from, from oh. the time, like soaps that had um, smells that are commonly used in Regency. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I need this. Like right next to me when I'm yeah. writing because, and some of the smells is like, man, I've used this in books and this is not smell good to me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. know. So really disgusting. I think we've, our, our senses and stuff have adapted through time yeah. and things that may, and like BO, you know, that would have been a very, much more common thing and nowadays I cannot handle BO but I guess they just have to well and then the BO with something trying to mask it you know yeah. so <laughs> you're not gonna fully have the right, right. smell because That's true. they never would have just smelled like that or rarely <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> okay so um did your travels give you like a ton more story ideas uh, yeah, I mean, I have a whole, um, I took notes, like, <laughs> probably, I, there was one place I went specifically in um, Northern Ireland, where I was the only one, like, they did these tours, and I was the only one on the tour. So um, I, that would be awesome, though. <laughs> it was like, I got to ask all the questions I wanted. But also, like, you weren't supposed to take pictures inside that house. And Sometimes I'll like sneak a picture <laughs> in that situation, but I couldn't because this lady was like, her focus was entirely on me. And so, oh, yeah. but I had my phone out and I was just typing away the whole time with my fingers. And I'm sure she probably thought I was like on social media or something like, no, I'm, I'm taking like copious notes on the things yeah. that you're saying. Cause it's all so interesting and fascinating, especially in Scotland, like where I went to a bunch of their of castles. I felt like I got a lot of information and I was like, Ooh, this is great. Like this is great yeah. fodder, you know? That's so. cool. <laughs> Um, did it, cause you weren't, I mean, you spent also a lot of time on mainland, mainland Europe and you also even, mm-hmm. didn't you go to Morocco too? Well, our plan was to start in Morocco, but they closed but the then borders. Then you went to Mexico instead, yeah. right? At the beginning. Yeah. So you never did get to Morocco? Nope. We haven't been to Morocco and I, I still really want to go. It's a place I've wanted to go for a while. So. We'll so see. you did stay just on in Europe then? You didn't go down on yeah. Africa? No, but we did go to the Canary Islands, which are mm. right off the coast of Western Africa. Northwestern Africa. So, but it's, I mean, it's part of Spain, you know, so um, it doesn't, I mean, it's, it was a very interesting vibe that the Canary Islands had. Um, and that's, we spent a month in that Airbnb. Um, and it was kind of like, we needed a, a little break. I think we went pretty hard in the UK and it was right after that. And so kind of a palate cleanser. <laughs> yeah. Like our boys just, we swam like every single day. Our, our Airbnb place had a, ho- had a pool and we really didn't get out that much in, in the Canary Islands. <laughs> so, but we needed it. So yeah, we said. I get that. So did it, has it made you consider writing in different time periods or in different locations that aren't just England and Scotland um, or even UK? So I will, I, let me just say when I did, when I made the switch from Regency to like Scottish, Georgian, Scottish, um, I vastly underestimated the amount of research that would be mm-hmm. entailed in that for me to feel comfortable in that place and era. It's just like, it's not that far away as as the bird flies or whatever but like the it's very different um Mm -hmm. and there's like a completely different history and so um and I loved doing the research but it was a lot and so that has really made me look at writing in other places differently where I'm like am I really up for that you know like no it's just like when I was in Northern Ireland I visited some houses and um there's just such a I mean they have such a complex history it's yep. similar in a lot of ways to, to Scotland, just but very different in other ways. And so it's just yeah. kind of overwhelming to think about, which has kind of put me off of, of the idea. But like, I can't, you can't help but like, go to some of the places that we were and just feel like inspired and be like, Oh, man, so many cool stories. But I'm yeah. also like, I don't know if I'm up for it. <laughs> it w- which, I mean, you you kind of have this, well, it's the same time period. And it's, especially with Scotland. I mean, mm-hmm. they share a border. Right. And Georgian, they were still under UK influence. You know, they were 
right. under British right. control by that time, mm -hmm. right. or at least for the most part. Right. So you, you kind of forget that how different it is. Uh -huh. But like, I get what you're saying, because I'm, I'm in, I wouldn't say I'm in the middle, because we are not even close to the middle yet. But you know, <laughs> I'm doing medieval. Oh, right. Yeah. Which you're like, still, this is England. How? But, you know, medieval, you are still under somewhat feudal and, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of that. And anyway, so I get it. I, I totally yeah. understand that research, which is probably why my medieval has not come out yet. Everyone's like, <laughs> when is that coming out? You told me about it like three years ago. And I'm like, I know, but to feel comfortable, to yeah. feel like you go, yeah, I, I'm going to do this justice. It's, it's imposter syndrome all over again. You it know? is. Like, it is. And yep. so it's hard. You have to, yeah, and then you feel like the mm -hmm. one that's like the newbie that's going to be mm -hmm. making all of those, you yeah. know. Yes, totally. Calling the grab the floor the ground. Yes. <laughs> so stupid. Who would ever do that? Who would ever do that? <laughs> anyway. yeah. All right, those are my only questions, which is good because we're at sixteen minutes, so you know. All right. <laughs> but um, would you recommend it to people? I guess this is my follow up. Um, yes, with some caveats. I mean, uh, people ask if we would do it again. And I'm like, would I redo what we did? Yes. Will I do it again? Not for that long. Um, I would do, I would love to spend, you know, like three months or something, but I feel like my kids started being done kind of like April <laughs> and oh. we still had a long way to go. Long and way to go. And we were all getting chunky, um, you know, like six or seven months in. So I wouldn't do it as long. And I would also just say, like, you you have to be adaptable. And, and mm -hmm. like, if you've never traveled before, I don't, I would probably not recommend yeah. just going for something like that. But if you've traveled and you kind of know what, what roadblocks you're going to come up against and the kind of cultural differences that you're going to deal with, then I, I think it's, I mean, I would yeah. definitely recommend it. I was talking to a friend who went to England for seven weeks mm -hmm. and I was like, we had just come home from Florida with my kids. And I was like, how, how do you do that for seven weeks? Like we were gone five days. <laughs> going crazy. We were gone five days. And I was like, how much longer do we have to stay here? Yeah. When do we get to go home? And she was like, but you were on vacation. You were Disneylanding every day. And she's like, yeah. you can't do that if you're there for seven weeks. Mm -hmm. At seven weeks, you are you have days where you don't do anything. You do laundry mm -hmm. and you, right. you know, your kids play at a park and she's like, yeah. it's a totally different. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is. I had it's never considered that before. They're so. really different like mindset. And um, you have, you have to have a routine. Like, you know, our kids had their nighttime routine. We didn't go out at night, like pretty much ever. And um, because we knew they needed to get in bed and we needed yeah. to have some semblance of a routine in our lives for it yeah. to not feel for us to not go crazy. So, yeah. So if you do it again, you'll just take a nanny. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like right. they, the only thing they really cared about was like parks and playing on their switches. Like they're, they just wanted to go to playgrounds and they didn't do well. in you know, it's no over castles. Or, yeah. Oh they were, yeah. Literally cried when I would say we're going to a castle today, literally <laughs> would cry. So I, think that's I sometimes hysterical. tease them about it. So I'm like, okay, hey guys, go get your clothes on. We're going to go to a castle. And they're like, wait, what? I'm like, just kidding. I kind of get that though. Cause I remember when I was in high school and we were going around Europe and by the end of the trip, we were all so tired. And so it would be like, we would be in the backseat of the car and we were dozing and my mom would be like, there's a castle. And we'd be like, yeah. Yeah. yeah see, that's, that's the real thing for me is like this when when you travel like I've done trips where it's like 10 days and I just go hardcore and yeah. by the end you are just exhausted and it's really hard to generate the enthusiasm that you know you should have for the places that you're going yeah. because you don't have those like normal boring moments and so yeah. like on a longer trip like this we knew that that was going to be really important for us to have like reset time where we can yeah. properly appreciate stuff when we're there because the rest of the time we're sitting in an Airbnb and you know just yeah Okay, last question. Favorite country? Oh gosh, Mindy. <laughs> um, <laughs> so far. I mean, I could, I could visit the UK like endlessly, really. Yeah, um, you kind of do. Yeah, <laughs> I can't stop going back. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it there. UK, so the UK. But if you're on it, like something more exotic, 
place that I've visited and loved. Um, I don't know. I, I, probably between Thailand and the Philippines, like both of those, just so different culturally and obviously like just beautiful. And so it was just a completely different travel experience to like the UK where you kind of feel like you've got enough in common where it's not yeah. so different, but. And, but yeah. those were a different trip. You obviously didn't. Yeah. Know, we didn't do like this time. So. So do you but find favorite... that, because you traveled a lot before, do you find that you look at places different now that you're an author? Do you like see different things? Yeah, I, I think definitely. Um, I just have so much more curiosity about like history behind things. Like when I, I did an internship in Paris when I was in college and um, at the end of the 12 week internship, I had to write this history paper about all the, these sites that I visited. And I was like, would have been really nice to do this before so that I could have properly appreciated the places yeah. that I was going. And now I'm much more likely to be like, you know, read the plaques and, you know, be more... I don't know, just interested. Well, I also think that comes with age. Mm, because yeah. when I was in college, I was a history major, but I was all about politics and war. I only mm -hmm. wanted politics and war. That was like, and now, and like, oh, social history. Oh my goodness. That's mm. what I would read if I wanted to go to sleep. I was like, oh <laughs> so no, funny. don't make me learn about the people. <laughs> and now you're like, and now I'm like, <laughs> I'm tired of war. I'm tired yeah. of war. I want to know, you know, I want to know what they Every wore. Day. I want to know what they ate. Everybody I want jealous, to know yeah. what they did, you know, totally, how they, yeah. how they lit the fire. Who knew fire could be such a, a thing you yeah. had to research, right? Yeah, totally. They didn't have the long clickers. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty long process. So, you know, <laughs> anyway, oh, man. So that's interesting. Well, one time we, sh we, I'm, well, I shouldn't say I will go because we both know me, but <laughs> I would like to. <laughs> one day I'll get over. One day my kids will be old enough that I, I won't care if I make them motherless, I guess. <laughs> just teasing. I will always care about that, I guess. But you know what I mean. It yeah, won't be quite so. It won't feel so scary for me. full of anxiety. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Well, thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. We were me. more like 22 minute author tidbits today as opposed <laughs> to 10, but it's Still okay. It was, it was well worth it. Well worth it. <laughs> well, so, thanks for anyway. having me. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys later. Bye.